Well, 3 was like one of the first games, was actually one of the packing games for my PS2, so... Hey guys, welcome back to episode 2 of Final Fantasy 7 with my two guests, Shit and PPC Havoc. Last time... He had... He... He had... See, had... No, I'll, I'll, I'll be plastic tubing Havoc for a while, that's fine. <laughs> Last time, we climbed down the ladders of the I've been to the basement a couple of times. I've never seen any of these things in the basement. Hmm. If they did, I'd stop doing the wash. If every time I went down to the basement, there was some, like, giant robot trying to fight me, I, I would not do the wash ever again. Ultima. Why? Why? Because. <laughs> kind of looks like that right now. So, out of the entire Final Fantasy series, who was your favorite boss? Hmm. Now, it doesn't have to be specifically like a actual boss boss, it can even be one of the quote quote mini bosses. Yeah, that's hard my to personal, say. My, my personal favorite. Uh, and there's a bit of a backstory as to why, is the ghost train from Final Fantasy 3. You mean 6? <laughs> Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy... It, it all depends on what time zone you're in. The Final Fantasy 3 slash 6 slash whatever the heck they want to call it. <laughs> the ghost train was my favorite. And the, back, and the backstory reason why is, uh, my first time playing through, me and a very good friend of mine were playing it, we were taking turns playing through it, and he got into the, uh, he got into the battle with the ghost train, and he attempted to do the suplex move on the ghost train. And I told him as he was entering the move, I was like, there ain't no way you can suplex the ghost train. I'm sorry, you just can't, you can't use those moves on the bosses. It, 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 it never worked. Well, apparently, the Ghost Train is not a full-fledged boss. It's, or, it's somewhat like a mini-boss. Because he successfully suplexed the Ghost Train. And to watch that animation play through was absolutely hilarious and has stuck with me to this day. Hmm. If you haven't witnessed somebody suplexing the ghost train, it's beautiful. <laughs> the move animation in and of itself was always hilarious. The guy jumps right off of the screen, comes spiraling downward, and slams the dude upside down into the ground. But to do it with the ghost train, to watch him leap into the sky with an entire train, was hilarious. Yeah. One thing I've hated about so many people in the past is time. 
five minute quests. When they give you a time limit to get something done in a quest, if you start rushing to get it done in time, because sometimes they give you just enough time to get it done, and you start to rush and you start to make stupid mistakes, you end up yelling at, at your TV, going, you know, How retarded are you? Why do you keep jumping off and on the same ladder? You've only got two minutes to live! got stuck. Well, too bad for you. Survival of the fittest! We didn't need you in this series anyway. Just like the movie, this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the hole, it's too late for you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh! Sorry, if, it, if there, there was a reactor about ready to explode, and they told me I only had so many minutes to get out, and I knew it was going to take me pretty much all of those minutes to get out, and somebody that I knew had got their red stuff, I'd just be like, I'm sorry, have you ever watched Star Trek? You're the red-shirted ensign right now. Oh, you have to go out here. Apparently, so they can go back and place the world because they got to. Oh, yeah, and the original recording, I actually com I completely ignored her when running back, and they told me to go back for her, and I, like, nearly ran out of time because of that. <laughs> now, funny enough, I made my own RPG, an RPG maker, where I incorporated the exact same scenario, where you had to rescue someone before escaping a place I was about to blow, except I did it completely wrong. I'm like Final Fantasy VII, where they show you in rough daylight that someone's stuck. I just had this rest person you need to rescue completely hidden in this really large map, and there was no hint that you had to do the rescue to begin with. Oh, by the way, it's a minute. There you go. PS1 FMVs at its finest. That's how you know that Nintendo couldn't do it. Say the worst RPG video game I ever played would have to be Eye of the Beholder for the Super NES. Which one? Eye of the Beholder for Super NES. For me, it's The Legend of Alan Dar on PS2. Mm, worst RPG, I'm not sure. Eye of the Beholder on the Super NES was... It, well, it wasn't horrible and, like, the story was bad. It wasn't horrible and the controls were bad. It wasn't horrible and the gameplay was bad. All of that was beautiful. What was horrible about it is there was a set number of monsters in the entire game, so there was a set amount of experience points. There was no map, and there were puzzles everywhere. So you got constantly hmm. lost. Always. It... No lie, it took me 11 years to beat that game. But the good news is, the plants keep going a little bit longer. Hmm. Not support. until it discovers how bad The Legend of Alandar is. Well, I now. did a whole review on that game. And... You did? That's not one of your, check one of your videos? It's one of my reviews, yes. I can check it out then. Yeah, like basically, in this RPG, you're basically defenseless against these little enemies that are like little rodent-like, little rodent dinosaur-like creatures. They attack you, like, basically it's a time-based system, like, y your time bar has to fill before you can attack. These yep. enemies attack you once every second for three points of damage, you only have 200 health, literally... In the amount of time it takes to kill one of them with your starting weapon, they take you down to half your health. You know, oh, I have played I have played plenty of RPGs that are extremely annoying. And but then the best part. Pretty much every enemy you come up against has one and only one weapon that is effective enough to kill them, and the only way you can discover which weapon is good is through trial and error. 
so yeah. Oh, well, that uh, that reminds me of uh, Hire the Beholder. You would, you know, you build your party at the beginning of the game, and you have two people that you can put in front, two people that you can put in rear. The people in the rear have to use ranged weapons. And well, that's kind they of can't a, that's move, kind of a sample. Even they good can't RPGs move like Sweet and it made you do that. Well, you couldn't move the people from the rear to the front. There was no town. There was no way of shopping for anything. There was no way of, you know, being able to trade items with anybody because you're stuck in a sewer. The entire game takes place in a sewer. Uh, if somebody dies, there's no way to bring them back to life. You just got to haul this dead dude around with you. And if he's one of the guys you have in the front, then the people in your rear have to continuously use ranged weapons. And there's ammo that they end up spending only so many arrows and if you fire an arrow there's no guarantee you're going to get it back so yeah you end up if you built your party wrong you end up about one third of the way into the game having to throw rocks at everything hello random random pretty girls standing below on the desolate street how are you doing today have you ever been to bangkok <laughs> okay There, there's no catastrophe. Hey, flowers. I like flowers. Sure, what? I just killed a giant snake in Resident Evil. One gill for flowers? Sure, why not? I'll Only a gill? That really is the year 1997. Yep. <laughs> Bye, lady. I'll never see you. completely random interaction with somebody who's completely not important. Oh, wait. Yes, yes, she is. She becomes quite infamous, in fact. Because of her name. Names. <laughs> well, that, and there's another reason. That's a conversation for a later episode. No, <coughs> well, it's not that hard. You don't have this, like, spooky glow to you yet. Always like it. You've got a sword bigger than most people's automobiles. Like, always like it. Oh, but listen to this scary basement music. How big his forearms are? <coughs> oh my! <coughs> I swear, with both of you coughing now, I'm gonna end up with emphysema. Oh uh, man, dude, I just coughs, I guess. Don't, didn't you say you had, like, asthma or something? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess that's why. I'm coughing because I was sick, really sick. <laughs> sick, really sick. Yeah. Yeah, spread the vibe. Yeah, from my ear, a plague's going around my school. <laughs> a plague went around my job not too long ago. It was going to because of this open system temperature. Isn't that what I find is going I love... I, I, I love Ohio weather. I mean, the minute I moved here, it was just... I don't, I don't get it. I do not understand. It's 
spent most of my formative years in New England, and I was used to, okay, these were going to pretty hard to freeze their butt off for the next three months. Then spring comes, and everything's spring-like, and then summer, and everything's summer-like, but I come to Ohio, and it's like, oh, it's August, you're gonna, gonna wake up in the morning to having to turn your heat on because it's freezing cold, and then by afternoon, you gotta turn your air conditioning on because it's blistering hot. Sure. Yeah, cloud never came. Could it, could it try? I'm gonna try it. Have I ever tried jumping on it? No. I probably wouldn't make it. I've done it as Max Payne, though. Yes, yes you do. You do look like a mind reader. His share of the money needs to go to the Barry the Blondie fund. Uh, looks like my dinner's ready. I'll be back in a minute. I heard ya! I miss those days. Aww. Aww. Big Cubby's got lots of love. I swear, I, I swear, you know, Barrett's got the voice of Mr. T in my head. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Aw, Jesse, thanks. If I didn't help you, we'd all be dead. The train break. Sorry for me. What the heck is that guy doing in the corner there? Oh, this is definitely not a children's video at all. Holy cow. I've been on the su I've been on the subway before. I've seen people like him. That is, that is scary. You got the old guy in the trench coat way in the back who's bald. You got this dude up in the front who's... I don't even want to question what he's doing. Cloud's going to need to see a priest when he's done in this train. You know, look at his face. Look at his face. He he has seen things that no one should ever see. Hey, 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 Lynch, uh, what you doing over there? Downstairs. Wedge is enjoying that train ride way too much. <laughs> uh, 
famous, and me too. Right, that's kind of his favorite, his favorite, that kind of... Obviously, Cloud's never seen the movie Dark World. Yes, the over here has two Earths. His Earths are Earths too. I guess this is the first three. <laughs> City floating on a plate. That damn pizza. Money. So this game is about the environment and economics. Like all the poor people gotta live downstream from Walmart. And all the rich people get to live in paradise. Train. 
see that next time. We'll see that next time. We'll see it. We'll, we'll see everybody then as we see what we're about to talk about. Enjoy the randoms. Enjoy the randoms. Enjoy the randomness, everybody. See you next time.